There are over 1 million searches per month on YouTube for alpha lipoic acid. So what does the research show? When is the supplement prescribed? Is it a good idea for already healthy people to take it? And what do I personally do? Let's get into it. Alpha lipoic acid, it's a potent mitochondrial antioxidant agent that acts by multiple mechanisms. And this is important because as we age, our mitochondria, they're less efficient. They start releasing all sorts of oxidants. So alpha lipoic acid on the surface, it sounds like a fantastic way to reduce the damage that those oxidants are causing as we age. The human body can produce alpha lipoic acid at a low amount. However, those amounts, they're not enough to fulfill the energy requirement of the cell. Therefore, it's mostly obtained from the diet, especially from meat and vegetables. Fruits are also a source of this acid. And over the years, alpha lipoic acid has gained considerable attention, again primarily because of its antioxidant activity. But it also helps to remove heavy metals from the bloodstream. And it helps to regenerate other antioxidants, such as glutathione and vitamin C and E. And finally, alpha lipoic acid has got the amazing ability to be both fat and water soluble. This means that it can mop up the oxidants anywhere in the body and so is often referred to as the universal antioxidant. Now that's all the hype. Does any of it stack up when the supplement is tested? Well, in certain circumstances, yes. Let's take diabetics. So diabetic people, they often have debilitating nerve damage. It's incredibly painful. So because alpha lipoic acid has the potential to mop up that oxidative stress, it may be able to improve the health of the neurons and therefore reduce pain. To test this idea, in 2006, a multi-center randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trial of 181 diabetic patients was done. They used a range of different dosages of alpha lipoic acid. What they found is that the total symptom score decreased significantly in the alpha lipoic acid groups. And this led to the conclusion that oral treatment with alpha lipoic acid, it does improve the health of the nerves that are affected by diabetes. So that's a robust clinical trial showing a benefit. And that's why some clinical guidelines suggest using alpha lipoic acid to help with the painful condition of these nerves. And while we're talking about nerves, there is a suggestion that alpha lipoic acid can improve eyesight. However, this is mainly based on relatively poor data. Let me explain. We do have a study once again looking at diabetic patients. The trouble is the ages of the different groups, they're wildly different. So we're not comparing apples to apples in this trial. So any conclusion that's borne out from trials like this, we need to be very skeptical. Now, the data that we've gone through so far, it's in diabetic patients and we've done this for a reason. If alpha lipoic acid is going to give a benefit to already healthy people, then we should see an even greater benefit in people that have got diabetes. So let's have a look at heart health in diabetic patients. The nerves that control the heart rate in diabetic patients, they're often damaged. And this is characterized by a reduced heart rate variability. And in this placebo controlled trial, after six months of treatment with alpha lipoic acid, the heart rate variability parameters, they did show some improvement. This is all looking great so far. So let's have a look at weight loss. We've got a 2020 randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trial, and it shows that people who were on alpha lipoic acid had greater weight reductions at the 24-week mark compared to placebo. There was also some improvement in antioxidant biomarkers. And that study is in agreement with the 2017 meta-analysis, where they pulled together all of the relevant weight loss data to have a look at alpha lipoic acid. That analysis concluded that alpha lipoic acid treatment, it coincided with a statistically significant 1.27 kilogram greater weight loss compared to placebo. Once again, there does seem to be something here. So in people that have got diseases, maybe alpha lipoic acid is an option. But now let's have a look at whether alpha lipoic acid can be used in already healthy people. So for example, will it reduce Alzheimer's disease? We don't have any robust human data, but looking at the mice data, there did seem to be an improvement in memory. But interestingly, in this trial, alpha lipoic acid, it actually shortened lifespan, which led to the conclusion that these 
results indicate that alpha lipoic acid it improves memory and reverses some markers of oxidative stress in extremely old mice but it decreased lifespan. These findings are similar to studies using other types of antioxidants. So what's going on here? How could alpha lipoic acid shorten the lifespan of these mice? Well, in a paper that describes the nine hallmarks of aging, they make the interesting comment that genetic manipulations to increase oxidative stress, it did not accelerate aging, and manipulations to increase antioxidant defenses did not extend longevity. What actually seems to be happening is that oxidants, they do trigger survival signals. So it seems that in people that have got extra oxidative stress, such as those with diabetes, then maybe alpha lipoic acid does have a role. We want to try and restore that balance but in people that are already healthy that have got that balance by taking alpha lipoic acid we might be upsetting that balance and doing more harm than good so for example would alpha lipoic acid protect the nerves of already healthy people just like it does for diabetic patients Probably not. And after looking at this data, it's why I personally don't use alpha lipoic acid. But for people that have got diabetes and are struggling with nerve damage, then yes, I would consider advising them to take alpha lipoic acid. And if my patients wanted to try alpha lipoic acid, I'd recommend to them to take the R version of alpha lipoic acid. This is the version that actually demonstrates effects in humans. And studies have reported a 40% increase in the absorption when alpha lipoic acid is taken in on an empty stomach. But for already healthy people, we can get enough alpha lipoic acid from our diet, mainly from vegetables such as spinach, broccoli, tomato, Brussels sprouts, and various types of meat. So let me try and wrap things up. People that have got diseased states such as diabetes, alpha lipoic acid, it may have a role to try and restore that balance. But for otherwise healthy people who have already got that balance, alpha lipoic acid probably won't give any benefits and actually it may cause harm. We need to tread very carefully.